I showed you many different ways to flash your LEDs for your projects, but I'm going to show you how to do it with sound like this right here for your welder or for thunder and lightning. So let's get going with this right now. I'm Tom Kovichak and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And last month I showed you this scene right here where I have a welder on it and some lighting on there. But I added a few more things. I put a barrel with a flame in it and then I activate the welder with the sound from a clip that I put on the DF Player Mini. So let me show you what I've been doing for the last couple of weeks. I've had a lot of things going on. I had to order some parts for it. I got the wrong parts in. Found some of the parts that I used were the wrong ones uh, that didn't work. I tried to opto coupler on it. And although an opto coupler works pretty good separating two circuits, I had to sever the connection from one Pro Mini to the other Pro Mini completely because it was interfering with the sketch. I don't know why it was doing it, but as long as the two were connected, the sketch on the second microcontroller didn't work correctly. So what I had to do was give it a high signal for a second and then shut it off with the relay so nothing was connected and then it worked fine. Now I have it set up. Now you remember the other uh, Pro Mini that I have. I did another one. I got a Pro Mini with the DF player on it. And this, um, this is going to be added to the display over there. But anyway, here is what is up there now. I have that on the Uno. And we're triggering it with this. I found another sensor and this is similar to something that I used at work years ago. It has a longer range than these right here. It's basically the same thing. You have the emitter and the receiver in there, but it's uh, amplified a little bit. But anyway, this is what I've been working on. Um, I'm starting it out the same way with the building lights coming on, but then the, fl the flame and the barrel comes on. Okay, from there... I'm transferring it over to the other microcontroller which has the DF player in there with the with the sound of the welder and as the weld as the sound goes so does the LEDs for the welder so once that's finished this will go off will transfer back over to here and then eventually shut everything else off but the problem that I was having was when I connected this one directly to this to trigger this one to start it wouldn't stop there's something about the the two of them being hooked together that messes up with the sketch so when I was looking for something to be low and it was high, it still started. So I had to put a relay in there. Okay, so the relay resolved the problem. I only had one relay. So then I thought, well, maybe I'll get an opto-coupler, which is this little thing right here. It's called an opto-coupler, and it's also referred to as an opto-isolator. And it has like a, you know, a little infrared LED in there that triggers a transistor. You only have the emitter and collector of the transistor in there. You don't have the base. And it, it acts just like a relay, but you sever all connections between the two circuits. Just like a relay would do when when you open up the, the, uh, the circuit. And it's a lot smaller and a lot cheaper than the relay. The opto isolator made the problem worse so it's going back to the relays now i put these two connectors on here for the relays okay this first one right here is going to be the trigger pin for here this goes to pin number four and as you can see i put the blue wire from here to pin number four and i got ground on both of these on this side here so there's the pin number four right there 
and then there's the pin over there with the ground on this side. So that will be hooked up to the relay on the other end. So that will start this Pro Mini here and start this. Actually, this will already be on, have power on it, but it will start the DF player. And I'm not quite sure where I'm going to mount the relay because this is the only relay I have right now. And I ordered some that's on a board. So I may just put this one on here, mount it somewhere, and then run that to for the stop signal for the other microcontroller. And here's what I have. I, I changed the connector for the speaker. I put a smaller one on there to match these over here. This is the, the red. I got it red, white, and blue for the... Um, welder right here okay this is the power coming in for some reason the raw pin doesn't work on there so i had to put it over on the vcc pin which is unregulated so i have to make sure that it's the five volts from the other microcontroller feeding over into here so i'll just have to jump the the connector from the other microcontroller over to here for the power for this one this is the relay that I got in the Elegoo starter kit. I had to mount it on a board so I could attach it to the other board. Attach it to the board like that and then run my wires to the bottom. This is the ground over here. This is the common going to the normally open contact. This is the feed in from the trigger pin going to supplying the voltage for the coil and then coming over here to the center contact for the common and going up to there. Now I have the relay wired into the other board. Been working on this thing for a while now and I think I finally got it. After playing with it for a while. I got me a new sensor and all I have to do is play around with the timing on this for now. But I got a new barrel over here with flames. Let's get that welder going so we can get out of here. I got some voice in it too. And the, the welder's noise triggers the LEDs. I just have to fine tune it just a little bit before I put it back on the layout. Here's what it looks like underneath. I just wish I could find a better mount than the ones that we got over here, those little white things. So all I gotta do is mount this and then tweak the adjustments on there. I tested it on another one, but just like I said in some of my lessons, you have to fine tune it once you get it up on your layout. So I'm gonna have to do that now that I have this all together. When I first started, I only had one relay on a board and luckily I got the Elegoo starter kit and there was a relay in there. So I ended up using that on this project also. As you can see, this relay right here, I got that in the Elego, Elegoo starter kit and I mounted it on a little circuit board. It is a maze of wires and resistors. Printed circuit board would be a lot better, but then you'd have to design it. <laughs> and that's where I'm lacking in my knowledge of designing a, a circuit board for it. I don't have all the wires hooked up to it now, but there, here is how I got it to work. 
I tested it out on a breadboard, actually two breadboards, like this, and then once I got it to where I needed it, I transferred everything over to these microcontrollers here. Well, when I powered this thing up, I'll show it to you in a minute, the raw pin, which is the one all the way up in the corner, I had that connected to the power on my connector, and apparently it's bad, the power supply or whatever the the uh, voltage regulator on there is not working, so when I put power on the raw pin, nothing happens. I had it all mounted and ready to go, and I applied power to it, and this board didn't work. So what I'm going to have to do is come back over here to the VCC pin and tap into that. So that's just plain 5 volts on there, so it's not re not regulated, so I can't put anything greater than 5 volts. On the raw pin, I could put a higher voltage on it, and it'll drop it down to 5 volts. So I'm going to do it this way right here. There we go. I don't know if you can see it there. All right. And there we go. I got five volts on the power supply, so we'll test it now. See if the light comes on on there. And there we go, we got the light on there, so we're good to go. That's all we needed to do right there to get this thing going. Is to move that wire over into onto the VCC instead of the raw. Let me show you where it goes. It goes right here, over top of the tunnel portal. This holds up the center of it. And then I had to move this. This was over here. I had this, but that's where I had the board. Where did I have that glued in there? But I had the board was in the way. So once I get it all up in there, I'll set this thing up there. And that keeps this end up. So this is this end is down, and it just rests on here. And I'm going to have to do some uh, painting and stuff on some of the other things there. And these are here to hold the wall in place. I don't know if I showed you that in a in a different video, but I just have the wall goes up in place like that and up against those stops. And then I got the short piece right there. So we're all ready to put this thing back together and finish it up. Okay, I got it sitting in place and I'm checking it for clearance and so we got plenty of room right there. The wires are out of the way. If I have to, I could wire tie these wires up here. And this is the speaker wires up here. So we're good to go on that. I got the power wires over here temporary until I run them down to the bottom. But there we go. The entire sketch, it's actually two sketch, two sketches. I'm going to put a new page on my website Tom's Trains and Things slash projects and I'm going to have it on there just like I have for Arduino Made Easy I have Tom's Trains and Things slash Arduino for those on there for the lessons on there I'll have the projects the sketches for the projects on Tom's Trains and Things slash projects so go take a look at it on my web page the entire process takes about three and a half minutes from start to finish. So you already saw the lights coming on, so I'm going to keep that out of it. I'm going to show you what I added to it as far as the welding sequence operated through the sound. And I have some more sound effects in there also. So let's go take a look and see what this looks like. 